Yeah, hi there, and these comments are for uh, some of my online TOEFL course students. Uh, some of you guys like to see when I give comments to other students uh, in my online TOEFL course, so uh, that's exactly what I'll be doing in this video. And as you know, I am Michael, the founder, owner, and the materials writer for the seven-step system to pass a TOEFL IBT. So if anybody else is watching this video at YouTube, if you want a TOEFL IBT speaking and writing specialist to get your speaking and writing score over 26 and 24 points on the TOEFL IBT exam, I'm your man. I will exactly help you do just that, right? So all you need to do is go to my website, onlinetoefelcourse.com, join my course, and I will start helping you get on the road to making the TOEFL something of the past, which means you won't have to worry about it anymore once you pass it, right? Okay, so let's get started <laughs> here. Okay, my first comments are to Brian. Let's see what we have. So Brian has uh, some pronunciation practice, lesson number 37, 41, and then he's doing speaking practice. So there's three things I have to do right now with Brian. Can we download the first one? Okay, let's go ahead and take a look here. Alright, so we're doing a paragraph reading. What causes autism? Researchers from all over the world are devoting considerable time and energy into finding the answer to this critical question. Medical researchers are exploring different explanations for the various forms of autism. Although a single specific cause of autism is not known. Okay, so we got it. So he's doing a reading passage about autism, and I'm checking his pronunciation. So let me find this reading passage first. Yeah, hi there, Brian, and I am Michael, your TOEFL instructor, and, and uh, you have completed some pronunciation exercises, and I'm going to double-check uh, your practice. So you're in this one paragraph, you're working on the syllabic consonants, the um and the un. Um, un. Okay, here we go. What causes autism? Researchers from all over the world are devoting considerable time and energy into finding the answer to this critical question. Medical researchers are exploring different explanations. Yeah, where is this? So it's not there. Oh, I see it. Got it. Okay, here we go. What causes autism? When you say the word autism, what causes autism? Researchers from all over the world are devoting considerable time and energy. Say considerable, considerable time and energy. Into finding the answer to this critical question. Okay. 
Medical researchers are exploring different explanations. Exploring, exploring, exploring different for the various forms of autism. Autism. Although a single specific cause of autism is not known, current research links autism to biological or neurological differences. Very good word stress. On those two words, biological, neurological, so very good the there. Brain. In many families, there appears to be a pattern of autism or related disabilities, which suggests there is a genetic basis to the disorder. Although, at this time, no gene has been directly linked to autism. The genetic basis is believed by researchers to be highly complex, probably involving several genes in combination. Okay, so I think overall, in terms of pronouncing those two sounds, I think you're doing a pretty good job there. So autism or un, um, un. So I think that you understand how to pronounce those syllabic consonants. All right, so let's go to pronunciation lesson 41. Many of the scores with the Asian Greek practice, and which may have Okay, let me find that one. Give me a quick second. Found it. Okay, let's double check your pronunciation of this paragraph. So here, let's see what you're doing here. Okay, so you're working on thought groups and blending, so you're trying not to do too many pauses, and then within each thought group, you're trying to blend uh, the ideas together. Many of the sports with the Asian Greek practice, and which may have a part of the Roman Olympics, are still surviving some way or other in the sport which we practice today. Good, in the sports which which, be careful that C8 sound, which we practice today. Their motivation, however, was for practice for war, and in this, in such motivation, that one can understand the emphasis on martial skills, such as wrestling, boxing the javelin, and running. Now, what I'd like you to do, one thing you can improve on, and I'll see if I can model this in a minute, is at the end of every thought group, excuse me, at the end of every thought group, except the final thought group in the sentence, the tone should be a half pitch higher at the end there. So I, I'm not, I don't think you're doing that as effectively as well, you could. such, less directly applicable sports as discos and jumping. Over time, as in the regular in the sport and competition alone, new sports were added, but it was these core sports which stood the test of time and which has continued to be practiced in similar form right up to the present day. Wrestling must be regarded as the most important sport practice in ancient Greece. The very Naples-Estra wrestling school must indicate its important Greek life. Nor need we be surprised at this for all... So, nor need we be surprised at this, not this, but this. Over the world, in culture far distant from each other, one can find a style. One can find a style of wrestling and fighting, for it is a useful skill in war. Okay, so I think for you, you're kind of putting your, you're, you're dropping your tone the, at the end of each thought group. So watch this. Many of the sports with the ancient Greeks practiced and which made up part of their own Olympics still survive in some way or other in the sports which we practice today. Their motivation, however, was for practice for war. And it's in such motivation that one can understand the emphasis in martial skills such as... Excuse me. So, martial skills such as wrestling, boxing the javelin, and running, while still including such less dir directly applicable sports as discus and jumping. Over time, as interest grew in sport and competition alone, new sports were added. But it was these core sports which stood the test of time and which have continued to be practiced in similar form right up to the present day. Wrestling must be regarded as the most important sport practice in ancient Greece. The very name Palestra, wrestling school, must indicate its importance in Greek life. Nor need we be surprised at this, for all over the world and cultures far distant from each other, 
One can find styles of wrestling and fighting, for it is a useful skill in war. So that's, you have to kind of think of it that way. So you're definitely dividing your ideas into the thought groups, which you're supposed to do. But at the end of each thought group, the tone should go a little bit higher at the very end because you're not done with the sentence. And when you get to the final thought group in the sentence, that's when your tone needs to drop. And that will help you to speak a little bit more naturally. All right? Okay, let's go on to the next one here. So we have independent speaking practice. If my friend was nervous because he would have a job interview, I would advise him to practice for the interview before him. And he do breathing exercises to relax previously. First of all, I recommend he prepare answer for kind of question, which could be on interview, because it's demonstrated that people who prepare for an interview beforehand do better the interview. For instance, if the interview were did a question which is similar to the question that he practiced, probably my friend wouldn't hesitate when answering the question. Second, I also suggest he do breathing exercises previous to the interview because it's a good method to relax and release the nervousness. This is why I recommend he practice for the interview and do breathing exercises. Okay. Let's listen to it one more time. If my friend was nervous because he would have a job interview. See, that's the first error right there when we go back. I think you're saying if my friend was nervous because he will have. I would say if my friend were nervous because he would have or if my friend is nervous because he will have. So don't mix the past and the future together. That's not going to work very well. If my friend was nervous because he will have a job interview. Yeah, if my friend is nervous because he will have a job interview. I would advise him to practice for the interview beforehand. And because you're talking about what's called a present impossible condition, it's probably better to say, if my friend were nervous because he would have a job interview, I would advise him to, and then give your advice. And he do breathing exercises to relax previously. Okay. First of all, I recommend he prepare answer for kind of question. So I recommend that he prepare answers for the kind of questions that he... Be on interview, because it's demonstrated that people who prepare for an interview beforehand to better the interview. For instance, if the interviewer did a question which is similar to the question that he practiced, okay. probably my friend wouldn't hesitate when answering the question. Good example, by the way. Second, I also suggest he do breathing exercises previous to the interview because it's a good method to relax and release the nervousness. So it's a good method to relax and release the nervousness. This is why I recommend you practice for the interview and do breathing exercises. And you say breathing, you mean breathing, I think. Breathing exercises, I think that's what you're saying, right? Okay, so breathing. Just make sure breath, you have breath as a noun, breathe is a verb. So the, the vowel sound changes according to whether it's a verb or a noun. Okay, now the next thing is I want to go ahead and take a look at the rubrics now. Let's see how you scored. On this one. Okay, so I'm looking at the rubrics right now. So you had you had some minor delivery issues, especially with the word breathe or breathing versus breath. So you had some trouble with that. Uh, language use, uh, maybe some minor issues with that. A topic development, you had a pretty good organization along with some supporting details. So uh, I'm going to put you at about 2.83 out of 4, uh, 22 points out of 30 on this practice test. Okay, so Brian is good. I go 
ahead and attach the file here. get something to drink. Okay. Yeah, hi there. These comments are for Marcelo, and I am Michael, and you have completed integrated speaking practice test number four at my website. And as you know, I am the founder, owner, and the materials writer for all of your lessons. So let's go ahead and download your speaking file. And let's see how you answered this question. And I might have already listened to this thing. Let me see. Let me make sure I haven't already listened to it. The reading passage states that there are two methods of learning. The first one is about personal experience, and the second one is about taking classes. Okay. Furthermore, the listening passage states two opinions. The first one says that the two methods of learning are very similar. See the word methods there. Make sure your tongue is between your teeth so the methods, the two methods of learning are very different. For example, a programmer can learn a basic skills in a classroom and also can solve more complex problems with some experience. Furthermore, the second opinion says that two methods are different. For example, taking a class is about listening on the teacher while the teacher is talking mm -hmm. and the experience about a skill more natural. In general both uh, methods are very important. The reading passage states that there are two Okay, so I think this is a pretty good response. So let me go ahead and click on the rubrics here. So I think overall you had very good topic development on this. You had a good organization along with some supporting details. I didn't notice any language use issues and fairly strong delivery. So you started off uh, speaking fluently, speaking clearly, and you maintained your rhythm and, and your pacing, I think, all the way to the end. So overall, it was really easy to understand what you're saying. So I think this is a very good response. Uh, on your part. I'm going to put you at about 24 to 26 points out of 30 on this. I think it is possible you could get a high score here. I mean 26 or higher. All right?
Okay, we're done with that one. Now let me go to speaking here. Yeah, hi there. These comments are for Rowida El Bardan, and I am Michael, the founder owner and the materials writer for all of your lessons at the seven step system to pass a TOEFL IBT. And you did independent speaking number seven, correct? Now, let me take a look at what this practice test is again one more time. So. And remember, one practice test per day, so I'll, I'll listen to the one, uh, one more tomorrow, so don't send me anything until I get these done. Okay, we got it. So it's number seven. Which, you, which of the two do you prefer when exercising, running or riding a bicycle? All right, so let's hear how you answer this question. First of all, in my view, you don't need to say that. That doesn't do anything. We already we, we know that it's your opinion without having to say that. So make sure you give yourself enough time to give specific and precise details to explain your ideas. And don't use a lot of empty or unnecessary words that don't really develop your ideas that much. Remember, every word counts when it comes to a 45 second response and don't waste words and riding a bicycle for two reasons firstly again for two reasons it's just not very specific that's a very predictable contrived response it sounds like you've memorized uh, a possible way of answering this and you don't want the IBT human raters to think that so I recommend here you can go to speaking lesson number seven to get some tips on how to create a more sharply focused topic statement. Uh, running allows me to burn more calories. I can exercise all parts of my body uh, through running. Say all parts of my body there, so say all those words. Uh, also, uh, through running, I can build more muscles in my arms, hips, and abdomen, uh, while riding a bicycle will increase the muscles of hips only. Uh, secondly, uh, running allows me to go I would say if you want to focus on one of those ideas, burn more calories or, or, or gain more or gain more muscle mass, I would just focus on one of those points and then give more specific examples. So if you think that running burns more calories, you can say, for example, if I'm running 10 to 15 kilometers uh, within an hour to an hour and a half, I can probably burn anywhere from you know, f 500 to maybe... 1500 calories during that workout. They can say, however, if I'm trying to bike, in order for me to burn the same number of calories that I burn through running, I might have to bike for more than, um, you know, I may have to go more than 40 or 50 miles over that same period. So I think you need to take time to support the points that you're saying before moving on to another idea. In my city, uh, because uh, every place is allowed to run in, but just different. Every place is allowed to run in. I would just say every place allows runners to run, you might say. Places that I can bicycle in. Okay. In my view, I. So let's take a look at this one. So. I think here uh, you're actually speaking remarkably clearly, so very good job on the delivery aspects of it. I didn't notice any major problems there. So you're speaking quickly, fluently, you have good pacing, and most importantly here, you're actually varying your intonation, so you're almost there. I like what you did there. So delivery very strong. Uh, language use... Probably you can do a little bit better job by using more precise vocabulary to help explain your ideas. In topic development, again, you need more specific ideas for some of those bigger points that you're mentioning. So your goal here is to focus, to limit your focus. So don't try to say too many things here. Just try to focus around maybe one or two key ideas and then give sufficient examples 
for each of those points, and that would be, I think, appropriate. Your score here, I, I still think you have a pretty good response. I'm going to put you at about 3.0 out of 4, 23 points out of 30 on this practice test. Okay, let's see what else here. I think I'm almost done.
Okay. Yeah, hi there. These comments, I'll just use your initials, uh, SRJ, and I'm going to listen to your independent speaking practice test number two. Now, I know a lot of students, they want to see sample you know, responses for how you answer these questions, but I hesitate to do that because I don't want my students to memorize any templates. I want you to actually develop your language use and your vocabulary there. I want you to actually develop it and use it and be comfortable with it and so on. So that would be uh, why I don't like to do that. So I'm just giving you that information there. All right, so let's go ahead and listen to what you're saying here. The event that changed my life is the day when I participated in your bodybuilding. Okay, so the question is here, uh, choose an event that has meaning for you. Explain how it has changed you. Okay, here we go. The event that changed my life is the... You say that word, say event. So put the stress on the second syllable. So the event... Day when I participated in a bodybuilding championship. When you say the word day, you need to pronounce that vowel longer. So day, day. That was in 2007. It was the first time in our country females were participating in bodybuilding championship. And just for curiosity, I also took part. We were 10 girls and... Okay, when the, the P sound, uh, you're not pronouncing that with enough air. So go into the pronunciation part of my course. I want you to focus on the P versus the B constant sound. Remember, when you're producing the P sound, when you pronounce it, you should be forcing enough air through your mouth to make the paper kind of flap in front of your mouth there. So that would be something that will help you speak a little more clearly. So remember to pronounce that P with more air. Finally, when the results were announced, I was surprised to know that I got second position in that whole championship. And I got lots and lots of appreciation from audience as well as my friend. At that time, I realized that physical fitness has such a wonderful impact in one's own life. And I decided to continue in that same field. Now, now, not continue, continue, but continue, continue. So you need to pronounce the T with more air also. So you really need to take a look at the P and the B consonant sounds. Also practice the, the T and the D consonant sounds. You can find all those lessons in the pronunciation part of my course. I am a well-known fitness trainer in my hometown. Yeah, I wish you could be my fitness trainer. I definitely need to get back into shape. I'm telling you, I just turned 50 years old this year, and wow, it's not easy. So I, I'm actually a pretty good athlete still, but I, I still need somebody to kind of keep me back on the right track. Um, okay, on this one, let's take a look at the rubrics here where I can give you a score. Uh, I think here you have a you have a pretty strong non-native speaker accent, so that's one thing that's that's holding you down. I gave you some comments uh, in that area. Now, from from the topic development standpoint, I I, I I want you to create a a better, more coherent organization. So this is not easy. Now, what you do is go to speaking lesson number seven. Uh, you will see some sample speaking topics there, and you'll see how you can organize them through four specific cohesive techniques. Now, once you go through the lesson, the next thing is to try to utilize these techniques into your speaking. Now, what I would do is, 
is to really understand what I'm teaching in the lesson you might take for the next two or three practice tests maybe take more than an hour just to write out the practice test making sure you're incorporating the ideas from the lesson into your speaking right then practice it several times and then post it for me so I can grade it then you can kind of see how you're doing there if you do that that will really help you to learn and master what I'm teaching in that particular lesson and eventually this type of co coherent organization it'll become more natural in your own speaking you see what I'm saying your score here uh, I'm gonna put you at about 2.5 out of 4 19 points out of 30 on this particular practice test
Yeah, hi there. Um, these comments are for Fatty, and I am Michael, the founder, owner, and the materials writer for all of your lessons at the 7-Step System to Pass a TOEFL IBT.